Very good evening. Welcome to Love Talk. I'm here with my wife, Elena. Hi, everybody. Tonight, we're going to talk about hard work. There was a news that came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, David Beckham, the sports personality, gave an interview in Australia saying that he's been married for 19 years and the success of his marriage, the success of his career has, done, has been down to hard work. Now, the reporters, the media took this and twisted it trying to say that being married to his wife was hard work and there we see the first problem because we can start to understand how the media how the world perceives marriage to be because they think that marriage has to be like a fairy tale where everything falls into place you meet someone and it effortlessly works it just works everything's perfect everything is beautiful amazing the birds are always singing it never rains right <laughs> and it's such a lie but let me tell you something I, I, I feel as if I feel like people that these days are allergic to the word hard work sacrifice difficult or it could potentially be difficult they are allergic as you can see David Beckham was actually you know teaching a, a, a very important life lesson how many people look at his life and want to be like him and successful like him? But hello, there is sacrifice, hard work behind everything we do. But look, the media. <gasps> sacrifice? What? Hard work? What do you mean? Oh my God, it's like they're having a, a fit. <laughs> so it, it's so shameful on how people are these days. They, they don't even give the man a chance to explain what kind of hard work it is that marriage involves. The, the, truth, the truth is that he did explain, but the media oh. twisted it. So the reality of marriage and relationships it, is that there is hard work involved, especially at the beginning of the marriage, of the relationship, where you don't know that person very well. It takes a lot of hard work for you to change your habits, to change your behavior in order to accommodate a new person into your life. And if anybody says that a relationship doesn't take hard work, that person's lying. You know, we've been married for 17 years, not as long as David Beckham, right? David Beckham's been married for 19 years, I think. Uh, but we are where we are because of the hard work that we did until, until today. And, and the thing about hard work in marriage is that as time goes by, it gets easier. It's not as hard as before because like starting a company, when you start a company in the beginning, it's a lot harder. And then afterwards, it's still hard, but it's more maintenance. So you, it's important that people who want to find successful relationships, they need to let go of the idea that when a relationship is good, is from God, then everything is perfectly into place. There's no disagreements. And you need to be willing to understand not only that hard work is necessary, but you need to be willing to put in the hard work to change yourself, to adapt to this new person in your life. The person needs to be willing to do the hard work. Yes, and this applies to very small, simple things, everyday things. And I'll give you an example. This is what they mean by it's, it can be hard work, okay? You've been single for many years, or not, but you've come, you've grown accustomed to your own space, to the way you like to put your things, the way you like to actually tidy your house, or you are someone who likes, if you are like my husband, everything has their own place, and no one should touch it because then it's a chaos, you know, who touched my things. So these are normal things that you have to adapt. Hold on a second, suddenly I have someone living with me who is, you know, going through my stuff. Oh, I'm just trying to borrow a t-shirt, is that okay? But deep down some people are like, okay, it's not really okay, <laughs> but it is okay. So these are the things that you go through when you, you enter a marriage. Little things that you have to sacrifice, your selfishness, for example. And, and that is a big one in itself, but people don't think about these things, you know. I can't stress this enough. Hollywood, everything they say to us through movies, you know, magazines, it's, it's all a lie. So, 
accept that your marriage to get better, your relationship to get better, you're gonna have to be willing to work hard, uh, not grudgingly accept it, and do work hard for it to get better, for you to understand that person better, for you to understand what the person wants from you. So when David Beckham said that uh, a successful marriage takes a lot of hard work, it's true. And we're gonna take a break now to listen to a song. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the hard work from the point of faith, from the side, the, the side of God, the point of view of God. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.
Welcome back. So, what is the hard work of faith? We already said in the beginning, people don't like hard work. It's difficult. If you, if you have to choose between hard work and easy work, surely you're going to choose easy work. But when it comes to faith, it's the same thing. Hard work is necessary. Sacrifice is necessary. And if you find yourself in a situation in your love life that you are powerless to change because there are two situations, two statuses in relationships that the person is powerful to change, powerless to change. When you're single, you're powerless to make the right person like you. You can't do that yourself. Of course, you can look after your appearance, you can look after yourself, but you can't make anybody love you. If you're married, you are powerless to make someone change, to make someone become a person of God if they're not of God. But that's where sacrifice comes in. Sacrifice is, is the weapon of hard work, like Elijah did, that can change all things. And, and if you're trying to avoid sacrifice, you're trying to avoid the one thing that can truly change your love life forever. Mm -hmm. That kind of sacrifice is the only thing that can really change the way things are going, you know? It's something that, this kind of sacrifice is something that you cannot explain it into words. Oh, how did you do for that, for your husband to like you? He's so good to you. Oh, he's so faithful. You know, men are not like this anymore these days. W what do you do? What do you feed him? <laughs> That's, I heard this one day from a friend. What do you feed your husband? <laughs> he's so nice to you. My dear, when everything starts on the altar, it's, you can't explain it. Things will come to you, not for free, but you will be blessed. You will receive what you need because you have trusted the altar. You have trusted God to do what you cannot do. And this is when people look at you and marvel and say, wow, you know, how did that happen to you? And not just in marriage, in, in relationships, but in everything in life in general, when you go to God for help. This is what sacrifice does. It's even difficult to put it into words. So if you are right now in a situation that you feel powerless to change your marriage, uh, you're single, then the altar is the answer. Sacrifice is the answer. Although I want to just make a little remark here. Remember, the purpose of this campaign, first of all, is for the Holy Spirit. And if you say, but Bishop, I need my husband to change, my wife to change, I need to find the right person. Don't worry, because if you receive the Spirit of God, you become so transformed, so different, so full of light, that the people around you will want to follow the same example as you. So sacrifice first for the Holy Spirit if you don't have Him. Secondly, then consider other areas of your life. We're going now to watch a testimony. When we come back, Today we have a question, we're going to answer the question in just a few moments. When I was in year nine, so I was about 14, um, I decided that, you know what, I'm really going to live a bachelor life. I had about two or three girlfriends at the same time, but if they tell me that they're going to leave me or they tell me, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I really didn't care because I knew I could always get someone else. They didn't know, but I didn't care if they found out, which eventually they did. And when they came to confront me, because I kind of felt like I was this flawless kind of guy, I could get anyone I wanted, I thought to myself, okay, um, if they find out, I will confess it. I won't deny it at all, because I have nothing to hide. That was probably one of the worst things I had ever done, like just being so cold and so heartless. And it stemmed from something that came from a long, long, long time ago. Because I used to see my dad um, behave that way towards my mum. He was quite cold. When I was younger, my mum and dad, they separated. And when I got a little bit older, they got back together. But then they didn't stay together for long. They stayed together for about four years. And it was because um, my dad was sleeping around. I always said I didn't want to be that way. I always said, you know, I want to be an example, you know, because I knew um, the kind of values and the morals of, you know, marriage and having a relationship. But there was no family member of mine that had both parents with the children. It was not like that. 
So it became something that was part of me and that's why I became so cold because it was just something that it almost felt like I had to be that way. I wouldn't want anyone to do that to my mum, I wouldn't want anyone to do that to my sister. But then I wake up the next morning like I never had those thoughts and I would just continue like living that lifestyle. In the spur of the moment it was good but then when you're alone and you're really thinking about life and you're contemplating life, it's the worst feeling to feel. So my friends, some of my friends knew that that's how I was with women. Um, or should I say girls at the time? They knew that that's the kind of person I was because those were the kind of people my friends were. I was really good at hiding things from certain people. So only those who needed to know I was like that would know. It weighs on your conscience, but you try to move on from it. So it would bring me down. It would make me feel depressed. But I would always just kind of find something to kind of take me out of that. But then I'll go back into that phase of feeling really low and just knowing that it was wrong. So it's not a nice feeling. It wasn't a nice feeling, that kind of depressive mode. Everyone wants to be that kind of bachelor and feel free, but eventually you want to settle down. You want to be focused in life. After holding so many things inside, so the pain of my mum and dad splitting up, I just became really angry. I wanted to fight my sister. I wouldn't mind fly kicking her, punching her, and I would just want to see her nose bleed or she gets a cut on her lip. I wouldn't really care. And that was simply because of the breakup of my mum and dad was it started to take effect on me when I got older because I was just building it up inside. I was just holding it inside of me. I started to realize it was a problem. Um, when reality kind of kicked in, I was getting older and I started thinking to myself, do I really want to continue living this lifestyle? And it was through speaking to some friends. I saw some friends who were really progressing in life, you know, and I started to realize that the life I was living, the anger, everything was just weighing me down and it wasn't making me a better person. I just didn't know what to do. I eventually got an invitation to come to the church. I started to really take things seriously um, eventually. Um, I started putting into practice everything that was told. So if it was, you know that sleeping around with girls is wrong, so maybe delete those contacts from your, from your phone. So I said, okay, that's something practical that I can do. So I started doing things like that. They were willing to listen. They were willing to say, you know what, what you're going through, you're not the first that I've heard of. So the same way how somebody else has kind of overcome it, so can you. So I really started opening up, speaking to people, um, attending the weekly meetings, and I started to pray, which is really weird for me. One major thing for me was letting go of um, bad company because my friends were going through what I was going through, but they weren't making any positive changes towards it. So. It came a point where I had to kind of let go of the people who were weighing me down. When I started coming to the church, a lot of the things that I was going through um, outside of the church came with me. Sleeping around was one thing that really stayed with me. So I, was, I think I was afraid of change. You know, when I think about it, though I wanted to, I think I was afraid of it because it was kind of like, what would come out if I decided to really change after I've lived so many years of my life being so bad, if I can say, being so angry, being so promiscuous. The Word of God was a big part of my change. In the beginning, it didn't make sense to me because it was just like it would go through one ear and come out the other. But when I really started to understand, now I can see how it applies to my life. Now I can see there's a clearer, there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, let me say. So the Word of God was a really, really vital part of my change. I'm not that promiscuous guy that I used to be, you know, now I'm actually a man of one woman and I can back that up because I'm married now. I'm running my own business, my family are coming together and they actually, after 10 years of, or maybe even more, of kind of like friction, it was actually my marriage that brought them back together. I no longer even want to lay a hand on my, my sister, you know, she's my best friend. You know, it's not just because, okay, I'm dressed up in a suit, I'm in a tie and all of that, that makes me a better person, but it's actually what happened inside because God actually came, you know, and changed me from within. He took away kind of like the emptiness that I had, the darkness that I had, the anger, um, the promiscuous life. He took all of that and said, you know what, give it to me. I'm going to give you a brand new life. And that's what I have today, a completely brand new life.
Welcome back. You see that nothing is impossible for our God, right? Now, someone wrote to us uh, from France. So, hello, our viewers from France. <laughs> and the person said, look, I've, I met someone online. The person is from the UK. I live in France. But eventually I told him that if we are going to get married, he has to give his life to Jesus. He has to go to the UCKG. Uh, since then, he hasn't really done that yet, and I haven't heard uh, a lot from him yet. And, you know, th there's a mistake there, because the thing is, when you reveal what your rules are, you have to do that from the beginning. Because if you don't do that from the beginning, you're setting yourself up for failure. It's gonna go wrong because you are expecting the person to do something that they didn't know was gonna be part of the package from the beginning, right? If you meet someone, and also when people do this, there is a chance the person will come to the church just to be with them, just to get married to them. And then that means they're coming for the wrong reason. So ideally you need to find someone who's of the same faith. If after you told the person you wanted to marry him, but only if he was in the UCKG, and then since then you haven't really heard from him that much, that's a sign that maybe this is not the right person, right? So it's ideal that when you find someone, you find someone in the faith already. You see, this question just reminds me of something that we hear all the time. And also in the church, people are very stubborn. Stubborn. You hear from the pastor so many times that you cannot, you cannot force people to change. You cannot force people, but people like to make the, you know, people don't like sacrifice. Because if I was to tell, maybe if she was to tell the guy firsthand, listen, I'm a Christian. I really live by my pre these principles and everything. So are you in or out? Maybe he would say I'm out. You know, there's no sleeping together before marriage. There's no this, there's no that. So. But people are stubborn, and look what happens after. And you know, there's, we, no, there's no shortcut, my friend. And you know, there, there are many cases, we have many cases in the church of a person who brought a friend, a work colleague to the church, a friend, a work colleague, and that person gave his life to God, changed, and eventually they, get, they got married. Mm -hmm. But there was no pretense from the beginning, you know, to, uh, to bring the person because of that reason. But when you develop a relationship, you develop emotions, and then you bring in the most important part at the end, because the most important part is whether the person is of God or not. When you bring that part at the end, then you're asking for trouble, right? So you who wrote to us, I think you're gonna have to make a hard decision. And if, he, if you just started getting to know him not too long ago, and you brought this up now, and the person hasn't, um, taken yet that decision it's a sign that perhaps you need to move on and like you said in your question you are getting to know him and this is who he is <laughs> you know he's showing you who he is and this is part of you getting to know him now could you have saved yourself the pain maybe if you had listened to what you you learn in the church and also in all the seminars we do for love life so uh, yeah, do what you have to do and move on. And learn from that experience, right? That's right, so today we spoke about hard work, sacrifice, and these two words are very important for marriage and for anything in your life. You want your marriage to be a blessing, you have to work hard, you have to sacrifice. And if you want your life to change in general, you want the Holy Spirit, you also have to sacrifice on the altar so that you can receive the promise of God, okay? It was a pleasure being here with you as usual. Enjoy now the program, Miracles Can Happen. And next week, we'll be here with you again. Remember to send us your questions. We will answer them as honestly as we can. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>